Hello everyone, welcome back to Fort Megs. We hope you've been able to check out some of our other videos that are available. But today, we're gonna to be looking at historic phrase origins. Those quips, idioms, one-liners, and even zingers that come from our military heritage. So stick around, this is gonna be a really fun one. Hi guys, I'm Dan, I'm the Programs Manager here at Fort Megs, and with me is John, our Historic Interpreter. And in these historic phrases, we're going to start out with the flintlock musket. It gives us a number of phrases, and the very first one being uh, lock, stock, and barrel. The ignition system for the musket is known as the lock, specifically a flintlock for the style that was used here at Fort Megs during the War of 1812. Uh, it's the ignition system, it is attached to the metal barrel, all held together by the wooden stock. You could have purchased things individually, or if you purchased them all at once, you purchased them lock, stock, and barrel. That's where that phrase came from. Another cool phrase from, uh, that is derived from the use of the musket is don't go off half cocked. Don't go off before you're ready. Uh, this is the cock, the, the hammer on the ignition system. This is the inside of the lock here. There's actually a little uh, clip right here that catches it, this is the safety position. When the musket is on half cock, it won't be fired. You can pull it to full cock and uncock it, and at the half cock position, it's, it is at the safety. Sometimes that piece can get sheared off. If it does, your musket goes off before you're ready for it to, and you go off half cocked, which is never a good thing. And the last one that we have for you today, uh, from the musket is the phrase flash in the pan. We use this today for something that might start strong but then fizzles out. Um, uh, athletes commonly uh, might have a good rookie season and then have a rather mundane career thereafter or a one hit wonder uh, in music. And this comes from the musket as well. This is the flash pan and a small amount of gunpowder will be poured in here uh, to ignite the entire system. But one of the common misfires that the musket has is that the priming explosion that occurs does not travel properly uh, inside the breech of the weapon if the touch hole there is clogged. So we do get an initial explosion here in the flash pan, but the main charge is not ignited uh, by that. Again, a common misfire, and that's what we call a flash in the pan misfire. So it's where we get flash in the pan today, a strong start, uh, but then a dismal finish. A lot of the phrases that we still use today come from disciplinary action within the armies of yesteryear. So to be drummed out of camp today, meaning uh, asked to leave an organization or to quit a group of individuals, comes from the court martial system where a soldier could be sentenced to leave the army, not to be kicked out. So you would be literally drummed out of camp. A group of drummers would lead you on a short parade playing what's called the robes march to the gates of that camp or the edge of the army's jurisdiction and you would be set loose to your own fate so to be drummed out of camp and speaking of drummers drummers were responsible for carrying out the disciplinary actions the sentences in the british army this could often mean flogging so the face the music today, meaning to own up to what you have done or to accept what's going to befall you, facing the music. Drummers executing these floggings, a soldier would have to literally face the music, not only the drummer administering that punishment, but uh, facing the line of drummers that are there to witness the, uh, mm -hmm. the sentencing being carried out. So facing the music. And that leads us to another phrase, speaking of the, the flogging, the tool that was used to conduct that punishment was known as the cat of nine tails. I have one in my haversack here. This is the cat of nine tails. Leather instrument, leather handle, nine leather straps here. Right now, the cat's out of the bag. That's where that phrase comes from. My bag here, my haversack, a common piece of equipment carried by the soldiers, and this, the punishment device. Also leads us to another fantastic phrase, not enough room to swing a cat. You might have thought they were talking about Tabby being swung around by the tail, but that's not the case. No, it was this instrument, 
not enough room to flail it to hit the, the guilty party on the back. Uh, often this was a re reference to aboard ships. The lower decks, below decks, the berthing decks, the gun decks were often four and a half, five feet tall. Men would be hunched over. Uh, there's definitely not enough room to swing a cat in those places. Moving on to army medicine from this time period, to bite the bullet. Today we use this phrase as an idea of uh, bearing down and enduring something very unpleasant. It's not that far from its original meaning, where a soldier on the amputation table with a battle wound might put a musket ball in the mouth to actually chomp down on that to help make it through the unpleasant experience of having a limb cut off. And here at the Fort Meigs Museum, we actually have artifacts that we've unearthed here, musket balls with teeth and chew marks in them. Kind of a grisly reminder of the doctor's activities here long ago. And some of the doctor's equipment we have here as well, uh, reproductions of the capital knife and the capital saw. This is the amputation equipment. Uh, the knife would be used to cut through the flesh and the muscle and the sinew to get down to the bone. Then this saw. Uh, looks much like a modern day hacksaw. Uh, would be used to saw through the bone. And it's a little bit of an antiquated term today, but you might have heard of a doctor being referred to as a sawbones. Hey, we've talked about the muskets. Now let's get down and discuss uh, the artillery, because we actually have a lot of terms that come to us from the artillery branch of the Army at this time. And the first one that we have for you is uh, a loose cannon. Uh, you can imagine on the deck of a ship or on the gun decks of the ship, if the gun were to break loose from its carriage and you have this tube uh, sliding around uh, during heavy seas, this is going to be a very dangerous thing. Trapping men, injuring them, and very hard to get arrested and, and back to its location. So today, a loose cannon is an individual, yeah, with an unpredictable personality, uh, maybe difficult to control and keep on a leash. So loose cannon. And somebody with a flashy personality is often called a hot shot. And that also comes from the artillery. What I have here is solid shot. This is your typical cannonball. Uh, it would be used to bash in uh, walls and go through fortifications, things like that. But they could also be heated up in a furnace. They would often dig a, a small furnace in the ground, light a fire in there, and fire these up until they're literally glowing red. Launch them at the enemy force, uh, and so they would come sizzling through the air. They might hit the mud here at the fort. They talk about that with them hissing, uh, steam giving rise, uh, and they were used to try to set fire to the buildings to ignite the gunpowder and things like that. So, hot shot comes to us as well. Also, solid shot gives term to the fun track and field event shot put. A bunch of bored soldiers uh, have nothing to do for entertainment, but there's a bunch of cannonballs laying around. Let's see who can throw one the farthest. And so shot put was invented uh, from, this, from this time as well. And the final phrase that we have for you today is uh, son of a gun. Uh, we've had a couple of terms for uh, individuals and son of a gun certainly is one of them. You can imagine army camps at this time very crowded places, very difficult for men and women to be intimate. Well, one of the places that they could garner some privacy is between the wheels uh, on the gun carriage uh, down on the floor. You'd be sure not to be stepped on in the dark uh, in a busy army camp. And of course, army camps are places where prostitutes may collect in order to ply their trade. A prostitute having many partners may not know uh, the father of their child if they were to become pregnant from their operations. And not knowing their father, well, that child is the son of a gun. We'll finish with one of the most memorable notions to come out of the War of 1812 that is still with us today, and that is the concept of Uncle Sam. Uncle Sam is a euphemism for the United States government, but it has its origins with a real-life person, Samuel Wilson. Uncle Sam Wilson, as he was affectionately known, was a meat packer from Troy, New York. He was a supplier of meat for the federal government during the War of 1812. He stamped his barrels U.S. to show they were government property, but those letters quickly became synonymous with his established moniker, Uncle Sam. Whether you believe that story or not, in 1961, a very patriotic time in our nation, a resolution of Congress officially made him the progenitor of that famous phrase. 
All right, thanks for joining us today. We hope you've enjoyed this lesson in the history of the English language. If you have other thoughts or other ideas about historic phrase origins and their military history, drop us a line in the comment section below. Otherwise, keep checking us out and we'll see you again real soon.